Good evening, Burlington. I'm Joe Viscioni alongside Matt DeMarzia as we are here in wonderful Wakefield against the Warriors where the Burlington Red Devils are playing. Matt, last game, the Red Devils lost a tough game at home, 28 to 31 against a very talented Watertown team. team. What did you see in that game that Burlington can improve upon? Well, first of all, they have to improve on their defense. They cannot allow the opposing team to give up. To, they can't allow too many ball transitions. They can't allow the opposing team. Uh, can't allow. They can't, they can't allow too many turnovers. They've, they've given up the ball too much. They need to start uh, pulling together. If they have. It, yeah, I agree with you. Burlington really does need to limit their turnovers because turnovers ultimately, folks, leads to how the game could come out. So hopefully, Burlington can limit that. We've seen many interceptions from Bonfilio throughout the season. Luckily, not that many fumbles. A couple near ones. Hopefully, Burlington can limit that today. Matt, what's your score prediction for tonight's game? Well, my score prediction for this evening, I think it's going to be a close game because this game uh, is a big one for the opposing team. But uh, we hope that Burlington will come out on top. I'm predicting it's going to be close, but... For me, I, I assume Wakefield, if they win this game, they advance and win their division. So it will be a That's close true. game, maybe 20 to 13 in favor of Wakefield. But it will be very close, and I'm excited to see what happens. Until then, we'll see you at the start of the game. I'm Joe Vicioni with Matt DeMarzia, and we'll see you then. We'll see you then. And I'm Joe Viscioni alongside Matt DiMarzio. As the Burlington Red Devils momentarily are set to kick off to the Watertown uh, yeah, Warriors. Water no, excuse me, to the Wakefield prefer. Warriors. Watertown was last week. Speaking of Watertown, Burlington had a tough loss, 31 to 28. Matt, what did you see in that game for Burlington? Well, I saw a lot of. They improved on their Wakefield offense. They uh, didn't. They. Yes, their offense definitely did step up in that game, providing them 28 points, which ties their season high. And it was a very impressive game, scoring for the second game in a row, uh, points in the second half, which would break their three-game streak. If you did not know, not scoring in the second half, so that was impressive by the new coach, Balian, who replaces Coach McGuire. As on the other side of the ball, Wakefield coming off as three and two with a fresh three game winning streak, losing their two losing two of their first games of the season in a row, one of the, one of which to Stoneham, who Burlington lost to two games ago, last away game, nineteen to twenty eight. But Matt, in that game, Burlington sure had resilience. What do you expect that you like from that game that they could provide for this game? Well, I like them to continue with their offense try to uh, not give up too many turnovers they want to have a good defense they want to try to you know create some plays create some uh, you know uh, good defensive offensive plays notable uh, players from uh, for the Burlington Red Devils on both sides of the football starting with defense number 12 Alec Rollins the junior Showing much depth in the cornerback and middle linebacker position. We'll see much from him tonight. Alongside Kyle Forrester, number 15, known for showing his depth at running back and linebacker. So hopefully we'll see something from him. A notable player that is injured tonight is Hakeem Anajarian. You may know him from the Red Devils basketball team. Also a fantastic, fantastic linebacker. Excuse me, a bit of a word fumble, known for blitzing the quarterback. So they will miss him certainly today. As on the as the kick is getting ready to be set by the wide receiver and kicker Fernando Lamine, who is not known for being consistent on his extra points and kicks. But we'll see here as it's fielded by Wakefield. Wakefield putting a couple moves as he gets to the outside and is finally brought down by number 12, just spoke of him, Alec Rollins, already on the special team's end. 
That, that was as, a good. As Wakefield will take over now at around the as around the 44 yard line. That that was a good stop by Burlington, trying holding uh, Wakefield to only to the 40 yard line. So they'll have to come up with some plays here to try and make it to the end zone. Burlington trying to prevent that, trying to create some good defensive plays. As Wakefield jogs on to the field, Mike Lucy, their starting quarterback, right here as Burlington is lined up in a 4-3 formation right now. As the handoff is given to Wakefield, as he is brought down for a gain of no yards, so a great stop already by number 15, Wakefield Kyle Forrester. No that was a good play by Burlington to hold, up, to hold Wakefield there, only for a couple yards to keep the ball where it is, to try not to get Wakefield too close to run, you know. Kyle Forster, as mentioned, along with Alec Rollins, two players that we mentioned in their defensive end and have already had big plays, so we will see a huge game from those two as Burlington is getting ready to set up a blitz as they rush in and give the handoff to number two who runs around the pylons and pick, excuse me, not pylons, field and gets three yards and a flag is thrown. That is the first foul of this game. Yes, and we are waiting for the referees to give their call. As it looks like it could be against Wakefield. As it is a holding Burlington. So Burlington. Burlington is called with a holding call. Automatic first down. So that will be an automatic first down 10 yards. So Matt, first foul of the game and Burlington gets penalized. This could be the story of the game if this continues. Definitely. You, you don't want to receive too many penalties. This is, penalties can definitely change the course of the game. It can definitely change the momentum of the game, but the momentum of the game, giving the other team the advantage. Now they're at the 50 yard line. And who knows what will happen. So two great dis defensive plays by Burlington leads to now with Wakefield having a first down on the on their 49 yard line as the handoff is given to number four on Wakefield yet again. Number four is Will Shea on the carry as he picks up four yards. As it will be a second and six I believe with as this is just the first quarter with around nine minutes remaining. As both teams break out of their huddle. As Wakefield is lined up in the offset eye formation, the handoff is given to Will O'Shea again, who, who drives up the middle and picks up three or four Will yards. Looks like, a a looks like it will be a third and two. Looks like it will be a, excuse me, third and two. As we have a timeout called on Burlington. So already nine minutes in, Matt. Burlington calls a timeout, maybe a bit of confusion as number uh, 36, I believe, on Burlington slowly jogs off the field. Could have been a bit of a scare for junior Cody Davidson. Matt, what does Burlington need to do on this defensive possession to stop Wakefield from entering the end zone? Wait, but they gotta try to hold them off. They can't allow the Warriors to uh, pile through and uh, create some good offense, good yardage. Uh, as Burlington is set to getting ready for the run again as the handoff is given to I believe that is number 26 who is brought down, but he will just pick up the first down for Wakefield as that moves the, uh, moves the sticks. This, is, this has been the problem for Burlington all, all season. They allow the other team to take over so early. As that was Derek Damascio there on the carry. I know him from somewhere. Will, uh, Will Shea and Derek Damascio, both great running backs that provide a lot of depth, a, a one-two punch combo, and we'll see them here again as the quarterback takes it himself, scrambling, and is hit out of bounds. As a bit of a big hit there as uh, Mackey gets hit out of bounds as he picks up five yards for Wakefield.
They're 50 50 tickets. 50 50 tickets. As the coach and players are getting set for a play, Burlington may be ready for a blitz. Blitzing the quarterback and getting a sack would be huge for Burlington, especially in this zone of the field. As number one, Michael Pavio is lined up on the right side as the handoff is given to, I believe, number 40, but a flag is on the play. Looks like it might be a holding call, I believe. As the second penalty of the game. As it is a holding, and it is against Wakefield. So Wakefield gets hit with a holding penalty. So that pretty much negates the earlier penalty called on Burlington. As they will have it second and 17 on their on their own 46 yard line. So Matt Burlington got lucky right there. They did. Now this is the penalty that you want. You want the other team to receive the penalty so you can receive back those yards that you lost and try to regain regain that momentum that you had previous. As the Warriors one by one break out of the huddle. Speaking of Warriors, their fan section is certainly alive tonight along with their band, hopefully providing much hometown support as the snap is up by Macy who throws it deep towards the end zone for number eight and it is caught and as he takes it into the end zone and that will be a touchdown That's for Wakefield. Yeah, touchdown as number eight, Joe Martisiasso already, I might have botched that already with a touchdown for Wakefield on a long bomb by Macy. Matt, what does this say for the first drive for Burlington? This is exactly what I'm talking about. They, this is the probably the one problem that Burlington has had all season, giving up the lead. They've been giving up too many runs early and falling behind. And when you fall behind, you don't, you, you, when you try to come back, it's hard. As that was Maranacio there with the first touchdown and drive of the game for Wakefield and both teams as the extra point will be set here. As it is a fake in the end zone, as it is caught for a touchdown. What an incredible play by Wakefield. They sure caught Burlington off guard. The, so, so, so far this game, the Warriors are all playing the, the Burlington Red Devils. Number seven, McKenna there with the great trick play. Fantastically designed by Wakefield as they tricked everyone there as they take the 8-0 lead with just under seven minutes remaining in the first quarter as Burlington will get set to receive the kickoff and try to match the score. This is not, this is not looking good for Burlington so far. They are uh, now trailing by eight. It's gonna be a tough, tough to get back. Because now, even if they get a touchdown, they have to uh, as we will see much from the offensive end of the field as the special teams unit comes on the field right now. Watch out for number 44, Billy Pappas, who's also, excuse me, a key, a key player on the defensive end who in week one hurt his ACL but is back now and a stud for this team as the kicker, excuse me, not even, we're not even kicking off, wrong side, as we have... I believe Julian Otavo in the backfield getting ready to field this kick. A senior who had shoulder problems last week, so we'll see how he does as it's a bit of a squib kick to Otavo, who picks it up at the 20. Otavo looking to his left, can't find a break, gets through a hole, and is brought down at the 36 yard line. Matt Otavo finding room and took it himself and picked up extra yards. That's good. That's what Burlington needs. They need to get back in this game early before the Warriors take over. As Burlington has it on the 36 yard line, first and 10 on the offensive side of the ball. Burlington is stacked to say the least. Number 20, Zachary Sear in the backfield, a running back, halfback known for his incredible touchdown and running capabilities as we'll see here, as it's given to Zachary Sear, who scrambles and picks up, I believe four yards on the carry as a bit of shoving with Bon Filio in 73 on Wakefield. 
Calm down, guys. As Kyle Forster, as we mentioned him on his defensive presence, is also in the game. Another couple other notable players, the kicker, Fernando Lamine, is also a wide receiver. So we'll see what he's capable of as he's known for being inconsistent. As the snap is given to Lamine, who nearly boggles it and is stripped down as the ball is loose. And it is Wakefield's ball as Burlington fumbles on their second play of the night. Matt, just about five minutes in, and this is not looking good for Burlington. It's not looking good at all. This is what I'm talking about. This is, what, this is what's been killing the Red Devils all season. Giving up turnovers, their defense. They just haven't been able to really go far with the ball. And speaking of inconsistency, there he was again. I mean, I hate to point it out on him, but he is known for boggling the ball as that play was just broken up and he fumbles and that gives the Wakefield Warriors great field position roughly on the 39 yard line as they might get set for another score here as Macy takes it himself and is sacked by a plethora of Burlington defenders as it is number 16 for Burlington, I believe. Patrick O'Halloran with a huge hit on the quarterback, knocking the confidence right out of them. Yeah. The uh, Warriors are now in control of this game so far. Let's see if Burlington can hold them off. Burlington already with that big sack is that will as I said, knock the morale right out of them as they have to go second and 16. But nonetheless, they did just get a fumble recovery with a still great field position. As Macy is set with, with one running back to his right as he hands it off to number eight, who is brought down by the ankles by number 44, Billy Pappas, as he picks up, I believe, no yards, no, excuse me, six yards there as he pretty much negates the six yard loss from that sack. As we'll see what this Burlington defense can do here with third and 10 to stop right here would be huge. Two receivers to the right, two to the left in the pro set formation. As the snap is given back to Macy, Macy looking high towards the end zone as the pass is too far incomplete. It looks like a bit of miscommunication there, Matt. That's the that's the first miscommunication for the Warriors. Let's see if Burlington can take advantage of that. That yeah, take advantage of these mis this, these mishaps, these errors. As the Wakefield offense jogs off the field, getting ready to put in their maybe special teams unit for, as it looks to be a punt. So it will be probably a short punt as we'll see what these Warriors can do here. As, as mentioned, they are three and two, losing their first two games of the season, but now they are three and two, winning their past three games. So we'll see what Burlington can do here. As the kick is up short, a fantastic punt. As it's given to Sear as he takes a fair catch on the 10 yard line. Matt, that's just what you want to do, a short punt. Puts it in fantastic field position for Wakefield. Burlington, not too great. No. That's a good sign for Burlington. That's the first uh, time that Warriors have failed to score in that drive. So let's see if Burlington can take advantage of that. Unfortunate field position though here for Burlington, Matt. So let's see what they can get out of this possession. As the Red Devils are set with number 20, Forrester, and excuse me, Zachary Sear in the backfield in the I formation. Bonfilio looking with Paddle Howard in, in motion as Bonfilio takes it himself, spinning, and is sacked by two huge defensive ends for, for Wakefield as he is brought down. And they are very close to that end zone right there. They don't get too close to that or else a safety could be. That was Devin O'Brien there in the sack, and as you pointed out, Matt, yeah, it is very close to the end zone. The last thing you want to see is a safety in this situation, especially being down 8-0 with only the first quarter. As we'll see what they can do here as Bonfilio looking intended for Lamine, 
as looks like more miscommunication there. It could have been overthrown by Bonfilio as that brings up third and 13 for Burlington. Matt, how big is this third down for them? It's, it's very big. It, it, it is early. It's not, it, it is only the first quarter. They have plenty of time to come back, but they don't want time, time to tick. They don't want, they have, they have to. Speaking of time to come back, this is what Burlington could do here and get a third down conversion as there is a flag as it looks like it could be a as we're waiting for the penalty as it's a false start as it's the offense for Burlington as that will make it a third and 18 that is just on the one yard line so Matt this is very close to being if a sack came a safety so Burlington has to be careful as Bonfilio getting set, looking at both of his receivers, signaling plays out. As this is where it is his time to shine. Bonfilio takes it himself, running up the middle, escaping for more yards, and is finally tackled. And looks like Bonfilio will come close to it as he picks up about 14 yards on the carry, so Matt, what came to be a little bit of a scramble to make sure no safety occurred, turns out he picked up some yards, but unfortunately he just couldn't get the first down. That's true. Uh, they tried to take advantage of that drive. They, uh, unfortunately, they did not, well, fortunate for them, they did not get that safety. Uh, as Lamine is set to kick off uh, as the punt is up high in the air, as it is waved off for by number 28, 26, excuse me, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick, not to be confused with the old Jets quarterback known for his butt fumble. Hopefully we'll see some of that here in another kickoff return. Maybe going in the way of Burlington, but nonetheless, the Wakefield Warriors have it at their own 49 yard line yet again. 49 yard line has been kind to Wakefield as that's where they got the holding call going their way, picking up 10 yards. So let's see what Wakefield can do with this ball position. Matt, how important is this drive for Burlington to stay in the game early? This is very, imp very important. They uh, can't allow the Warriors to strike here. This is only, you know, the confidence level. The confidence level for Burlington has to be, you know. As Macy takes a snap and hands it off, I believe that's number uh, 40. For PJ Lanuzzi there with the carry for a loss of one yard, two well, yards. As that will bring up a second and 12 with roughly two minutes and 50 seconds it's remaining it's here. As if you're just tuning in, the Burlington Red Devils are down eight to zero by the Wakefield Warriors here. As I'm Joe Vicioni alongside Matt DeMarzia. DeMarzia as the uh, Burlington Red Devils and their defense are getting set right here is Macy looking to his left and number seven is brought down by it looks like Julian Otava who's a bit shaken up there. Number seven, Alex McKenna there. So Wakefield Matt already using various players to try to get them yards. For Burlington we only see a couple players like Lamine and Zachary C are trying to pick them up yard, yards, but it seems like this team is very deep with their roster. Yeah, they are. Um, they are uh, taking advantage of this lead, and they are definitely uh, taking advantage of Burlington's mistakes. And you know, as there is a odd formation in the trips formation here, as Macy looking towards his left, his lone receiver in the end zone as that is overthrown yet again for the second time of the night intended for Pat Leary as that will be a fourth down second time of the night where Wakefield will get set to punt with already good field position pinning Burlington most likely back in their own red zone. So far the Burlington's defense is looking good holding holding uh, the Warriors off for the second straight time. As that would as that is a nice improvement for Burlington after giving up a touchdown on the first drive of the night as number nine on Wakefield, Pat Leary, the man who just had the carry, is getting sit, getting set to do a punt as the K 
kick is up and it is fielded by Zachary Sear, who takes it, gets a bit of blocking, who takes it around the edges and is finally brought down at, the, at his own 44-yard line. Zachary Sear picking up more and more yards, showing what a great runner he is. He is a very good runner. He's a very good player. He uh, gained some yards there, gained a lot of yards, and now giving Burlington a chance to maybe score some points, whether it's a field goal or touchdown. We hope it's a touchdown. As any points would be good to get on the board here for Burlington, as there's not too much time remaining in the first quarter. Bonfilio set up in the I formation as the handoff is snapped and given to Zachary Sear up the middle, who finds the hole hustling and bustling and is brought down for a first down for Burlington. This is a very good drive by Burlington. They are running the ball good so far. They are, so far, this is the first they've been. Uh, they're now on Wakefield's uh, side of the field. As two receivers are to the left, as that is Fernando Lamine and Pat O'Halloran, none to the right, trying to confuse the defense. Set up in the I formation yet again as the handoff is given to Sear, trying to do the same play. Sear escapes around the edges and picks up three yards. As Sear is tackled by number five, Mark Benenstein there. As it will be a second and seven for the Red Devils. As the clock is ticking down more and more, Burlington would love to score here before the first quarter is over. Burlington set up for many times tonight their favorite formation, the I formation, as Bonfilio fumbles the uh, the handoff and gets no yards on that on that play. So on that, more miscommunication already for Burlington. Yes, there's a lot of miscommunication from both ends actually. Um, they. They, got, they caught a break there with that, that, that fumble, but good thing they, they recovered. Elias and Burlington got lucky there on that play as the first quarter comes to an end. As the Wakefield Warriors are up 8-0. And we'll see you at the start of the second quarter. Welcome back to the second quarter. I'm Joe Vicioni with Matt Demarzia as is the Red Devils with third and six as the, fat, the pass is nearly fumbled as Ponfilio is brought down and thrown out of bounds intended for Pat O'Halloran. So a bit of a late hit there by Wakefield. Nonetheless, they get another stop as Burlington's offensive unit is back in here again with fourth, fourth and six on the 41 yard line, making it look like they will go for the fourth down conversion. Very tricky as they're set up in the trips formation. Bonfilio under center takes it himself, avoids a hit, throws it for Lamine in the end zone, and it is as he is brought down by number 26. Ryan Fitzpatrick playing cornerback there with a great defensive effort, and man, Lamine got hammered there. That's a tough break by Burlington. So He uh, almost, almost got that, almost scored, but they got another chance. Let's see if they can take advantage. As Burlington turns over on downs here, in fact, Matt, as they, as the Wakefield Warriors will get good field position for almost the fourth time of the night. So almost every time that they have touched the ball, it has been in great field position. As Macy, John Macy will have his room to perform his magic as he did once before today. Two receivers to the right for Wakefield, one to the left, set up in the offset I formation. Macy does the shot, does the lateral pass backwards as number eight finally is brought down as he picks up eight number yards. Two, Speaking carry, of his number on the carry, as that is Joe Maranasio there on the carry. Burlington has to try to hold off the Warriors here. But this is the spot where the Warriors strike the most. They, uh, they're... Set up in the eye, offset eye formation yet again here for Burlington. Excuse me, here for Wakefield as the handoff is given to O'Shea, who O'Shea gets no gains of yards there. As, uh, there is no gain. Oh, 
On the Bruins at 49 yard line. Excuse me, not no gain. The exact opposite. A first down for Wakefield as they have it on the Burlington 49 yard line. So they will get a reset of downs here and try to get that elusive touchdown, which they have already received, trying to get a second. Matt, what can Burlington do to prevent that? Well, their defense has to st step up and they can't allow the Warriors to uh, take advantage. And, and as you said pregame, Matt, they really need to limit their turnovers. Yeah. And already we've seen a turnover by the Burlington Red Devils on their offensive end, which was still in pretty decent field, uh, excuse me, field position. So hopefully Burlington can do something here on the defensive end to put a stop to it. As their defensive unit, known for being fantastic in the past few years, as we have Alec Rollins, as mentioned, alongside Zachary Sear, who is playing the defensive end as well, and Julian Otavo, the wide receiver, playing safety right now. As many players on this Burlington team is known for playing many positions, as their depth is huge for them. Many multi talented athletes. As the snap is set, Burlington in the 4-3 offense, defense, excuse me, as, as, the hand, as the pass is given off to number eight, as he is brought down for a pickup of no right yards, as it will be second and 10 for Wakefield. So far, Burlington's defense is looking, looking good so far. They are holding off the Warriors. Uh, and Paul D'Angelo. Once again, support those who support us. The session team is open. Get your Marinacio there on the carry yet again to him. And I want to point out that WD elected again down in the end zone. As we'll see much of him and many other running backs here in this game for, for Wakefield. Three receivers to the right, one to the left in the trips formation as the fake handoff is given to, I believe that's number six. Marinacio the carry to no, the 44 No, excuse me, Marinacio. They're on the carry, the mixing up numbers already. Third and As it's going to be a third and five on the five-yard carry by Marinacio. Uh, um. As the Red Devils defense has another big down to prove themselves here on the, de on the defensive end of the football lineup in the 3-4 formation as it looks like it is a blitz here, as it is not successful, as Wakefield scrambling towards the end zone, a fantastic move and is brought down by number 44, Lucy Billy Pappas. What turned in to be a blitz, and a near perfect play, turns into a first down for Wakefield. Again, the, the Warriors are giving Burlington a run for their money. This is, so far, they are run the ball good, Burlington needs to try to hold them off. And and at this point, Matt, you kind of feel like Burlington really does need to limit those uh, turnovers, and they really need to get a big defensive stop here because that could kill the morale of the game, and their confidence could go way down as the handoff is given to Marinacio again, who is brought down as he picks up two or three yards there on the carry. As getting a stop right here, Matt, would be a huge confidence booster for Burlington as they're already down 8-0 in a fourth down territory and isn't this territory for Wakefield instead of kicking a field goal when you're in high school, Matt, kicking field goals, you don't really make as many as the pros. The pros usually make about 85%. Here, we see Lamine, he's missing extra points, so Wakefield might go up for a fourth down in the situation when that does come as Macy goes for the end zone, wide open as he is hustling into the end zone for the second touchdown of the night. For number seven, yet again, McKenna. As Macy and McKenna connecting for the second touchdown of the night. Matt, speaking of confidence drop, that is sure it. The confidence level of Burlington has to be very low right now. I don't know, well, they, have, they have the time, but time is ticking and Yo. Burlington down 14-0 right now as they are getting set for an extra point. As Don't be alarmed if you see a fake here as Burlington's already lined up with safety Julian Otavo in the end zone as the kick is up 
and he nails it through the uprights to make it 15-0 in favor of the Warriors. This is what we feared. When you, this is what we feared. The uh, Burlington, they've given up the lead too early, a big lead too early, and when you do that, it's hard to overcome that. It's hard, the confidence level, the, you know, the momentum is obviously on the Warriors. They are away, but they, you know, they have, they have to find a way to. Burlington get. should be prepared for this moment. They, they can't be coming into a game like this and thinking it's going to be easy. Unfortunately, after losing a couple of games to a great team right here, Wakefield, winning their last three games already on a winning streak, and that really matters in any sport. The winning streak really makes a huge difference. So Burlington has to expect more of themselves and this team if they can limit turnovers. They can, it would be key for a successful drive right here. As nonetheless, we have Pat O'Halloran and Julian Otavo in the backfield here, getting set to field a kickoff by number nine. Oh, Wickfield Weary. As the Warriors are set to kick off on a frigid cold night here in wonderful Wakefield as the kick is rolling and rolling to Otavo. Otavo picks it up and is brought down for a gain of one yard there as it will be Burlington's ball on the 22 yard line. This is, a, this is a very important drive by, for Burlington because they, uh, they need to get back in this game. They have to score while there's time because Halfway these Warriors, they, with, their fan, with their fans right here, they have all the momentum, and the Burlington has to try to break that momentum. Yeah, great point. That, great thing that you pointed out here, Matt. They have the momentum here as they're up 15-0 with about seven minutes roughly in this second quarter as the fan section is certainly supporting them at a home game. And what Burlington really needs to do here is just get in the game and give themselves a chance by having an offensive spark. Here the carry ball is dead. As Zachary Sear on the carry ball is dead as it will not be a fumble, a near one. So that could have looked ugly if they gave it up again. That's fortunate for Burlington right there. They can't allow, they can't allow the Warriors to come back here. This is where they have to hold them off and try to get, get a turnover, maybe stop them here, no more, get uh, first downs or it, you know. Burlington, a new coach, Billion, getting set up for another play here as they're set up in the I formation. Two receivers to his right, one to his left, and the handoff is given to Zachary Sear. Sear running in, picking up two yard, two or three yards on the carry. Looks like he will have the first down, might be short. This old ball and chain crew is gonna get set to measure this out, as it will be third down here third and it looks like inches as it is a QB sneak by Bonfilio as it will be definitely a first down in favor of Burlington so Matt Burlington starting to build up a bit of momentum here I know it is just a first down but that's what we need that, that's okay, exactly what we need uh, Burlington is, no they uh need to find a way to get back in this game. They, uh, their, their defense is lacking a little bit. Uh, As Zachary Sear is brought down for it looks like a loss of five yards there. As the Warriors being warrior-like and reading that play perfectly. Now, the, uh, where the Warriors are I definitely have the offense and defense. Burlington, they have to try to bounce their way back, you know? As Burlington needs to fight back, Zachary Sear in motion as Bonfilio takes the keeper play himself, brings it up. As it will be third down, as it looks like he picked up. And, and you wonder gain for Burlington, as you were saying, and, Matt. And you wonder on fourth down, will they this early in the game? Will they try to go for it, or the, will, will they play that risky type 
move. Third and five here, Bonfilio under center formation as the pass is deflected by number 77, Devin O'Brien. O'Brien already with the sack today and with a great deflection, so he is sure providing depth and strength on this defensive end. As Burlington, Lamine in the backfield will get set to punt for the second or third time tonight. And, and like I said, uh, they have to start scor scoring, scoring some points here. Their offense is, that, that's the confidence. The confidence level is very low. As you see, the, you see right there with the. As the uh, snap is perfect, and the ball rolls with an incredible kick by Lamine, who is who is nearly brought down, and he finally is. By it looks like, I believe Junior could be Cody Davidson. That is number thirty-eight, Chris Rocco there as what turned in from a decent drive from Burlington to a great special teams play. This has been the, uh, this has been the consistency all night. They have not been able to find a way to run the ball. They haven't found a way to really show some offense. No, no I'm, offense I'm so interested far. to see what Wakefield will do here as their two touchdowns have come from Macy targeting McKenna on deep passes, so maybe we might see more of that right here. As he's lined up in the I formation, Mac Macy hands it off to Will Shea. Shea picking up about two yards there on the carry as it's gonna be second and eight with roughly four minutes less than remaining. As Wakefield is lining up for a, another snap. As Macy gets set to give the handoff to Shea yet again. Shea dives through a pile of players and is not tackled, tackles himself there as he picks up one or two yards. Third down. Third down and one, so picks up four yards on the dive. Plus, that's good for Burlington to hold off the Warriors here, not give them any hopes of like any like totally blowing this game out. They have to try to avoid that, and they've been in this situation before. They've been in this situation uh, in the last away game where they were down and they came back and they scored some touchdowns. As Burlington set up for it looks like almost a blitz here as the handoff is given to O'Shea again as oh a flag is thrown. As it looks like the referees are deciding their call. Could be a holding call. Penalty As it is a penalty on Burlington. First down Warriors. I believe that was a illegal formation there as Burlington will unfortunately get tagged there as it will be a first and 10 for Wakefield. Not what they needed as there is about 2.30 on the clock as they're probably just going to run it down and try to get another score before the half ends. Yeah, they, they have to. They have to try to get back in this game. Two minute war, and and two minute penalties, it, that just kills you. And now the Warriors have some gar some yards here, and they're going to try to run the ball and try to you know, blow many, out this game. Many times here for Burlington, they haven't hit with those tough penalties. As the handoff is given over to Mariciano as it is taken Marinacci down, Marinacio. I see he's taken down by Kyle Forrester for no gain. Looks like a loss of one yards as it is a timeout for Burlington. Loss of three yards, so great great tackle there by Kyle Forrester. As Burlington trying to rejuvenate their defense here as there is very little time left here in the first half. Matt, what does Burlington's defense need to do to get a stop? 
Well, their defense has to. The defense to me has has been good, but they've 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 turned over the ball. They've no, they've they're off. They're to me, their offense is what's lacking in this game. Defense, I mean, they they have given up 15 points, but I I think the, the main fo focus is their offense. Their offense has not been stellar. The snap is given, and it looks like it's a near blitz, but he gets the pass off at the last second to 48, who's taking it downfield and is nailed and hit low by number 17, Julian Otavo. So what turned into a bit of a scramble by Macy on Wakefield is a fantastic to number 45, Alex Jolly. He was sure jolly there on that play. He sure was. That's an advantage when you have home field. Warriors have fans here. They have the momentum. They have a big lead right here. They're going to try to use that to their advantage. Burlington is going to try to hope that that what doesn't a, What doesn't a happen. scramble pass there by Macy. I mean, he was taking much pressure by about four defensive ends and just gets it off the jolly. I mean, I'm impressed with him there. As the pass for Macy yet again, Macy looking deep towards the end zone intended for McKenna as just overthrown as they try to go for him as it, he was guarded by Michael Pavio as it will be no, no, as it will be, as it will not be a completion as it's thrown out of bounds. So it will be second and 10 from the Wakefield 41 yard line which stops the clock at around a minute. Matt, this drive is crucial for both teams, isn't it? It is. For Burlington, definitely. For Warriors, they have a lead. They have the they have the momentum, so they're not worried about this drive here. Burlington is. I they, feel I feel like Matt. Uh, excuse me. Wakefield needs to be just as worried because if they get a score on the board right here, right now it's about of a two possession game. If they can make it a three possession game at halftime, that puts them in superior position. Speaking of that position, McKay leaning toward the end, leading to about the 35-yard line as the pass is incomplete. Intended for number two, Andrew Miller, as it's just short. As it's going to be a third and 10 with 55 seconds remaining in this half. And as I was saying, Matt, if you're Wakefield, if you're the Warriors here, a score would be huge because that would crush, it would absolutely destroy Burlington's confidence knowing that you're down by, for instance, 22 points at halftime, but Burlington also needs a big stop. As Macy firing as the pass is just deflected by it looks like one of his own players, number 26, Ryan Fitzpatrick. There is it's incomplete as it's me fourth and 10. As speaking of a great defensive stop there, Matt, Burlington forces Wakefield to a quick three and out. And now they're gonna get set to retain possession with around 50 seconds. That's right, Burlington is right now. Ha uh, they have a chance now to score into halftime, maybe gain some momentum and get try to get back in this game. As it's weary, Setting up for the punt as he fumbles the punt as it will. <laughs> Looks like he slipped it there. And Burlington will get very fortunate getting it at the 44 yard line. So, Matt, what seemed unlucky for Burlington, we get it at the 44 yard line. Now, how can this play in a part of Burlington wanting to get a score? Well, um, As it was the punter who fumbles the punt as Bonfilio with two receivers to his right and two to his left as it is a flag thrown as it's a false start. False start on Burlington. So that is Crusher as it will go to the 49 yard line. Still remains a first down. Burlington will have it with first and 15 on the Wakefield 49 yard line. As Bonfilio in the in the shotgun. Zachary Sear lined up as a wide receiver right now. 
Rakes by, throws it deep, intended towards Sear, as it is nearly intercepted by number seven. As McKenna, McKenna known for catching passes as a wide receiver, nearly picks off the pass by Von Filio. Yeah. And he was out of bounds anyway, so even if that ball was caught, I don't think it would have been picked off, but because he had to have both feet in in the uh, within the uh, fair territory. And Still a very close call as Burlington is set up in the trips formation. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Trips is usually used to confuse the defense as they certainly look right like that right now in a cover four in zone as Bonfilio throws it towards Lamine as it is dropped, but we have a penalty flag on the field. It's already a second and 15 here for Burlington. Matt, if this penalty is against Burlington, it would be Crusher as we have a holding Burlington. on Burlington. Speaking of it being a killer for Burlington, now they're going to have to go for second and 25. What was once great field position is now turning That's into pretty I mean, abysmal field yeah, position. That's right. You know, penalty is going to kill you. And Bur so far, Burlington has taken taking the most of those penalties. and Simple as that, Matt. Penalties are going to kill you, and they're going to make a difference in this game as Bonfilio gives a little of a screen pass over to Zachary Sear, and Zachary Sear escaping for more yards. Looks like he picks up 13 yards there as there's about 14 seconds. As it will be a timeout for Burlington. Burlington. Burlington has it with a 14-yard gain, so it will be third and 11, which could be their last play or second-to-last play here for Burlington as they took the timeout. Matt, what does, what, if you're in Burlington in this scenario, what would you do, throw a Hail Mary bomb pass in the end zone or go for another short uh, dump play? I would I, I would take a short pass. I would uh, take a... Take a uh, Try, try to get these some some points at some point. As it will be interesting to see this one. As it will be interesting to see what Burlington will do here. I'm expecting maybe a short little dump pass and then a hail mary. But they do have four receivers in the trips formation yet again, lining up on the right as the whistle blows. As there is a zone right now, drop zone formation. Bonfilio looking for Sear as the pass is thrown a bit high as he is taken down and takes a timeout with 2.7 seconds remaining. And Burlington, looking right now, will probably take a Hail Mary pass. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of a short dump pass, just as you were about to predict, Matt, that's what they did. Couldn't get out of bounds. Luckily, they had a timeout, unlike one team, the Cowboys. Speaking of NFL, blasting at them for losing their week one matchup. Where they forgot to go out of bounds. That almost happened with Burlington here. As on this play, we all know what's going to happen here. A Hail Mary bomb to the end zone, just like they drew it up in Madden 2K17 or whatever the kids play these days. That's right, yeah. It, it, it would be a very risky move to do a Hail Mary play right here. When you have, you know, the second half coming up, uh, I do think they should be able to score some points here, whether it's a field goal. I know it's it's a tough for, you know, for varsity and stuff. And as, get I'm, as I'm predicting a pass by Bonfilio intended for Fernando Lamine, the one lone receiver on the left, as it is a three for zone formation as it is a short dump pass to Sear. Sear going through the end zone, Sear, excuse me, running up the sideline, gets out of bounds as it's a timeout as it looks like the clock expires as there will probably be 0 0.1 seconds most likely as Burlington. <laughs> well, this indeed will be their last play of the half as the clock has expired but Burlington looks like there is confusion on the field by the officials maybe not getting the time right Matt now it's pretty clear what Burlington is going to do they're going straight for the end zone simple as that yeah they they have to I mean they don't have to in this scenario but uh, 
they would like to at least get on the board here. Because uh, like in any sport, you can't win if you don't score. Well, when you're in this field position, what are you going to do? Try to kick a field goal? Go for a little run? No, you got to score the dang ball. And scoring the ball, they need to go for the end zone. As Burlington is lined up with three receivers to the left, one to the right with .1 seconds on the clock. Bonfilio throwing it for Lamine in the end zone as that is batted away by Wakefield as the half concludes. Wakefield is up 15-0. Matt, what does Burlington need to do to get back in this game at the start of the second half? Well, their offense has to improve. I like to see them be a little more, and they be, I think they're being a little too aggressive. That I think they're not really, they're kind of not really going for the ball. They're kind of full potential right now. They need to, yeah, they need to go for the ball more. Maybe take a bit more risky plays and not be dumb over them. You know, not do a careless turnover like a fumble that happened on one of the earlier plays by Von Filio, as that will be key as the band is getting to the take and come onto the field right now at halftime. And some Joe Viscioni alongside Matt DiMarzio. As the Burlington Red Devils are already done with the first half against the Wakefield Warriors. We'll see you at the start of the second half. Welcome back. I'm Joe Viscioni alongside Matt DiMarzio. And you're tuning in to BCAT Sports, where the Burlington Red Devils are taking on the Wakefield Warriors. As it is currently the start of the second half as the Wakefield Warriors unfortunately are up 15-0 over the Burlington Red Devils. Matt, what did you see in, this, in the first half from Burlington? Well, we saw, um, we saw uh, some misplays by Burlington. They, their defense was, was good. They, they gave up 15 runs, uh, 15 points. Uh, they, As it's a short kick, excuse me, to Kyle Forrester, sorry, Matt. As it fumbles off him, Forster escaping in space, slicing and dicing, hustling and bustling outside to the 39 yard line. Kyle Forster with the first play of the game. Six seconds into the second half, already providing for this Burlington team. Matt, how about that? That was a great play by Burlington. They got the ball now. They're at a good position right now to score some points here. We love to get, they love to get a touchdown. That will put them back in the game. As the momentum certainly does shift in Burlington's direction right now, as Burlington's lined up in the I formation, Julian Otavo to his left, two receivers to the right. As the handoff is given to Sear, Sear taking it up the middle just by himself yet again. And Sear picks up a first down. What a play by Zachary Sear. The man, the myth, the legend with the carry and the first down. That was a great play by Zach. He uh, is surely one of, one of the top players in the, Burl in the Burlington Red Devils. Back to Sear again, and Sear picks up four yards on the carry there for Burlington. So Zach Sear on these first two plays already with more and more yards as it looks like a couple players are down on both ends of the field. A bit of a mix up right now is... Second down. As Sear did indeed pick up four yards there. As it's going to be second and six. Bonfilio, they're lined up in the I formation yet again. Bonfilio looking for, for I believe, Otavo. Or not sure who that is, but nonetheless, about a two, three yard game there. Matt Burlington with a little. Run to start out the to start out. Excuse me, the first down. A nice little short dump play. Nice scheming. Yeah, they're making good plays so far. This is the one of the this is the furthest they've been this this entire game. Uh, As Sear and Bonfilio collide, but what matters when you have Zachary Sear who pounds it by past the markers and picks up another Burlington first down. And I'm, and I'm even flown on adrenaline right now as we would love a score as the Burlington Red Devils are currently down 15-0, putting them in a hole. Hopefully they can do something here in the second half. As the shovel pass is given to Sear. Sear takes it straight up the gut and is brought down for, uh, I think, no game. Maybe he picked up one or two yards on that play. 
but not too many. The, the Red Devils are doing good so far. They as Burlington is lined up right now as Bonfilio with the fake looking in the end zone as it is boggled and it is an interception for Wakefield. My goodness. I, I, I'm at a loss for words right now. Bonfilio, it was not his fault there. Intending the pass for Fernando Lamine who looks like he was just about to catch it but fumbles it off his hands and it intercepted. What happened, Matt? They're, I think they're playing too aggressive. I think they're they're, they're, I think they're rushing the ball a little bit. They're, they're uh, making mistakes, a lot of mistakes, and these mistakes are going to cost them. They have cost them. And, and as, as Zachary Sear, the running back, slams his helmet against the ground on the sideline, an aggravation as the Warriors take over here in under sender formation. As O'Shea picks up one or two yards there, uh, picks up multiple yards on that carry, about four yards. And Burlington got a bit lucky that the refs didn't yeah, see that full start, which team. I did from up here. One of the perks of being up in the press box, I guess. No, uh, I Matt, I guess the one good thing about that turnover is they don't leave Wakefield in good field position at least. That's right. They are, uh, the Warriors right now are way back. They are uh, at a good, at not a good position to score, which is good for Burlington. That is a penalty flag. Looks like it could be a false start. 79 on Wakefield, full of frustration. Maybe more than Zach, or, than Zach Sears' helmet slam. As it is a false start yet again against Wakefield, so that will be five yards, repeat second down. This is not looking good for Burlington so far. They are, they uh, have lost the momentum. We thought they would turn around here, but so far they've been playing. I mean, great field position and a near score went to nothing is now Wakefield, they may not have field possession, but they do have possession of the ball, which is important because without the ball, you can't score. So, <laughs> excuse me. Burlington need to take advantage advantage on the defensive end as there is pressured, nearly brought down as he throws it away, looking for an intentional grounding as that ball was nowhere near a wide receiver if you not if you do not know intentional grounding is when a quarterback is being pressured and has to throw the ball out of bounds to avoid a sack. If the ball is not 10 or 15 yards near a receiver, it will be intentional grounding, which is where, where the ball will land at the spot, which would be a safety for Burlington. Nonetheless, it will be third and 10 for Wakefield, and let's see what they can do here as their field position is tricky, Matt. Yeah. They, uh, they're, they're at a position where they're not used to. They're used to being further down the field, halfway through. But they don't have to worry. They, they have the, the lead. and As the Warriors with a pass. And I believe that's McKenna. McKenna getting more and more space. And I see a flag, but nonetheless, it takes it to the 25-yard line. The Warriors continue to pound Burlington. As there's a timeout. Looks, I saw a bit of a uh, holding there on Burlington, but we'll see what the call is. As it is a penalty against Wakefield. That's good news for Burlington. Not sure, not quite sure of what it is. I believe it was a hold on Wakefield as they will get it. To the spot of the ball, which is at the 11 yard line, so a big hit for them as it's a third and five on the 10 yard line. So Burlington Matt getting lucky with that penalty going their way. That pushes the ball back, which gives 
Burlington a little room to hold them off and try to get the ball back and try to try to score. That's what what they that's what their main goal was Burlington, coming into this Burlington game. Burlington with a four man rush. And he gives it over to number two. Lucy Chet to Carmen. Andrew Kirk. Miller. Wakefield like first, first down, down. As that will reset the downs, putting Wakefield on roughly the 16 yard line of their own, making it a bit tricky here for Burlington. Yes, they can. If they don't hold them off here, they're, they're going to be in a very precarious predicament. Now, I wouldn't go that far, Matt, considering it is only on their own 16 yard line, but Nonetheless, they do need a big stop, and that was a great stop right there. As number eight, to the Joe Marinciao. Okay, 23 yard line, 23 yard line. Joe Marinaccio there with the carry. A bit of mispronunciation there myself. And two, two receivers on the left and right. As we have Pat Leary in the backfield alongside Lucy as we have time a out. timeout. Wakefield. Wakefield. This gives time this gives time for Burlington to regroup and think through some strategies, see if they can overcome Warriors dominance so far. They've been they've been outstanding, the, the Warriors. You gotta, you gotta give them credit. Not that much credit. And if you and if you missed the first half, Matt, this was a very good game. Unfortunately, Wakefield put two scores up on the board. First, a touchdown very early in the game, followed by a two-point conversion. Then a fumble by Burlington. And then yet again, Wakefield took it into the end zone for another touchdown. And that's how the half ended it. Ended, making it 15-0 right now, six minutes in. Luckily, no scores have gone against Burlington. But Wakefield does have possession as it is second and three to go. Hopefully, Burlington can get some big stops right now as they are missing one of their key players, a great pass rusher, Hakeem Anajarian. You may know him from being a star point guard point guard on the, on the basketball team. And now, speaking of the pass rushes, it looks like a near false start. And Lucy is pressured, dumps it off to 28, who takes it down the sideline. He's going towards the end zone, slows down a bit. But nonetheless, is brought down Lucy by Burlington. Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick looks, Burlington that looks like he slowed Seattle. down a bit there. He looks like he was he had a convoy ahead of him, could have taken it, and it just slows down at the last second. Looks like he wanted to run out the clock, maybe. Or I don't know what he's thinking. Well, the Warriors, so well, the Warriors are continuing their dominance, and. Burlington. Lucy with the incredible fake play as he's taking it towards the end zone. He will not be down. Escapes the pylons. Okay. Touchdown, uh -huh. Wakefield. Wakefield does it again. Yeah. What did they do? Make they scored the dang field. ball. And that's how you win football yeah. games here. Maybe if you're playing soccer, you don't score the dang ball to win games. But that's football for you folks. And that is their third touchdown tonight. Just roughly six minutes into the second half. Matt Burlington is in an odd situation. They're in a very precarious situation right here. This is unheard of. The Warriors are blowing this game out. They, they want to make it to the playoffs. This is the game that they can do it. And so far, they're heading that way. But Burlington is trying to As hold them off kick is up through the uprights and that will make it 22-0. Matt, excuse me, as you were saying. So, yeah, the, the, the Warriors, they're, they're playing like, like playoff contenders. They are really giving Burlington a uh, 
a bit of a low blow by the Wakefield announcers here saying as this game is concluding when there's just six minutes into the second half. So a bit of doubt from this Wakefield announcers here. Hopefully that can fuel Burlington as they have a game against Winchester. Hopefully Burlington can put that right in the fuel tank and turn that into a couple of scores, but we'll see as the Warriors are set to kick off. I mean, I'm sorry, I just, I just don't get that. Gotta have some common courtesy here. As the channels have been overrun with advertisements, I haven't heard one football term in four minutes. As the kickoff is taken by 45, Alex Jolly. Must be a jolly man as the kick is up in the air. Short, as it's taken by Zachary Sear. Sear takes it, tries to spin through and is brought down at the 24 yard line. I'll stop it with those jolly jokes by now. Now Burlington has to, at this point, this is like every drive they, they've come across so far, this is the most crucial. They have to start scoring here while there's time left. Because once the fourth quarter hits, they have to try to get some run, get some points here. <laughs> Maybe even earn the respect of the announcer back too. As Bonfilio under center with three receivers to the left, one to the right, looking for Zachary Sear, his running back, who takes it and picks up five yards there on the pass. Excuse me, six yards on the pass. Zach Sear, an absolute beast. Nothing short of it has provided this Devils team incredible power at the running position. Unfortunately, the record is one in four, but despite that, Zachary Sear is a bright talent and just being a junior, will sure to have a fantastic year next year. So something to look forward to. As Lamine looks like he beat his receiver, as it's thrown just short and broken up by number 26. Ryan Fitzpatrick as a penalty flag is called. So it could be on a celebration maybe. Let's see what the referees have to say about it. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct, Wakefield. Unsportsmanlike conduct, mostly for celebration against Wakefield, as you can hear the boos on that play. Burlington will definitely take that one, as that pass did not go their way, but the penalties just keep stacking up for them. At least that's one positive thing going their way, Matt. It is a positive. It definitely gives Burlington the extra edge to get back in this as Bonfilio takes it himself, himself looking like he will either get the first down or just inches short of it, as it will be a second and one for Bonfilio on that QB sneak. As there is much, much hate going towards the refs after that call, as Bonfilio takes it himself yet again and picks up the first down easily with about a four yard run. Matt, a couple keeper plays there. Tricking Wakefield. High snap to Bonfilio. Bonfilio having pressure and has to dump it away. Number 40. On, way, on the Wakefield Warriors, snuck right by the offensive line, who has been, they've been squeaky. They've had some good on and off games. But right there, they got right through the hole and Bonfilio was pressured and had to dump that off. Burlington's looking good right here. They have, they have some time here to get to the end zone and try to get a touchdown, try to get back in this game. They have... Uh, Bonfilio working with second and 10 in the under center formation right now. Throws it a quick pass to Zachary Sear, nearly picked off. Sear escaping and picks up the first down. 
on the 31 yard line for of the Wakefield Warriors. Matt, this is the second time in the half that Burlington has entered the attacking zone on Wakefield. Earlier we saw an interception, I believe. What does Burlington need to do to capitalize here? Well, they need to do better capitalizing on get, no, getting to the end zone. At, it's, it's been a tricky spot for them this whole evening, but this is the time where they have they have to find a way to get to, to get to the end zone. Bonferio heaves it towards the end zone and is caught by as it is ruled a touchdown, Burlington, as he gets on the board. That's how you do it as it makes it 22 to six after a fantastic touchdown pass by Patrick O'Halloran, his first of the season. Matt, you get on the board, you're back in the game. That, that's what I've been saying this whole evening. No, uh, momentum, momentum shifter. You uh, can change. Uh, as it will be interesting to see what Burlington does here as their kicker Fernando Lamine has missed more extra points and made one so far this year, which is not a fun stat to hear. As Burlington, knowing that, will go for the two point conversion. Two receivers on the left, one to the right. Bonfilio looking. The pass is deflected, and they will not get the two point conversion. So Burlington will fall short there as it will be 22 to 6 in favor of the Wakefield Warriors as they are going to be set to receive from a kick by the kicker, Fernando Lamine. That's unfortunate for Burlington to not get those extra points there, but you know, they're on the board right now, so let's see if they can use that to their advantage, gain some momentum right here, try to get back, try to, you know, try to get some turnovers. They need some turnovers here. But with one quarter remaining, they have some time here. They can't allow the Warriors to score anymore. This is where they had to come back in the game and try to capitalize. As we'll see what Burlington can do to get back in the game. A touchdown was a great first step to leading this comeback, and hopefully they can pile on more and more as this game continues. Burlington is getting set to kick this thing off. A bit of mix up between the referees as they have to switch sides to do this kickoff. Come on guys, get your sides right at least. I mean, you might have blew a bit of a pass interference call earlier, hint, hint, but. Get your sides right at least. As the Red Devils are getting set to kick it off. Lamine sets and the kick is up. A short kick in the air as it's fielded by number 30 who was brought down at the 35 yard line by number 18 on Burlington, Matt McNeil. Matt McNeil there on the tackle for the special teams unit. Now this is where Burlington's defense has to step up even further. They have to prevent the Warriors from scoring anymore. They have to hold them off, try to get some turnovers here. Like I said before, they need to start scoring some, scoring some points here while they have time. Now it comes to Burlington's defense, as you're mentioning, Matt. Their offense did their thing right here, and they needed to be able to depend on their defense to get a stop and lead them, hopefully, to another offensive attempt as they did just put points up on the board. A possible score here by Wakefield would be very unfortunate as a handoff is given. And I believe that's 26, number 26 on the carry, Ryan Fitzpatrick, as he picks up two yards. As it's second and eight from the 37, as there's less than three minutes remaining in the third quarter. If you're just turn, tuning in, I'm Joe Viscioni alongside Matt DiMarzio. And we thank you for joining in to BCAT Sports as the Burlington Red Devils are taking on 
the Wakefield Warriors. Warriors. Sometimes forget that. As it is a fake pass given to O'Shea. No, Shea, who takes it up the middle. Fooled me yet again. Shea doing it every time. As continuing, as said, we thank you for watching here. As we like to give a shout out to our group. Thank you for doing a great job doing the camera as always. Thanks, Joan. As that great first down here as well by the Warriors. I should I should know the Warrior I should know Wakefield's mascot is the Warriors and there's a giant W on the field anyway. Well I should know because I well, I don't want to mention it. As the handoff is given and it is fumbled and recovered by the Red Devils. The luck is turning to the Devils way in the second half. As they recover a fumble at, at their own 47 yard line. Matt, there you go. More momentum, as you're saying, back in the game. That's what I'm talking about. Turnovers. Turnovers are key right now for Burlington. They, get, they have to take advantage of these. Gets the end zone, try to get back in this game. You know, and shift that momentum as, right back to them. As fans of Wakefield are certainly not in support of that of that recent turnover, and that's what Burlington wants to change the tides. And changing the tides is Bonfilio, who was brought down by number nine, the kicker and wide receiver, and even running back, Leary there on the tackle for a no gain for Bonfilio. Let's see what Burlington, Burlington, Burlington could do here. Bonfilio intends it too high of a pass intended for, I believe that was Pat O'Howeran. Yes, looks like Leary got a bit scrappy on that play and nearly kicked, o, kicked O'Howeran at the end of it. Calm down as, excuse me, that was Kyle Pena there with the intended pass, not Pat O'Howeran. As Bonfilio scrambling, as it is intercepted by Wakefield for the second time tonight. As Wakefield takes a huge hit from Zachary Sear in aggravation, which will draw a penalty flag. Matt Burlington, they got lucky on that fumble recovery and now throws an interception. I'm speechless, what happened? It's not looking good for Burlington right here. They're this has just been out of hand so far this evening. They're giving up too many turnovers. Then this is what's going to kill them. And so far, the score speaks for itself. But, you know, one team gets momentum, and then before you know it, the other team just takes it right back. And it's, it's that momentum shifter. As it is frigid out on this cold October night. As the Burlington Red Devils, I don't even know how they're not freezing at this point. As the Devils are getting set on their defensive unit, the one positive thing, if any, about that recent play, Matt, is Burlington did get a fumble recovery around this same yardage. So at least it wouldn't be hu a huge loss. As number eight escapes for more yards and is tackled down by, it looks like, Kyle yeah, Forrester. Excuse me, Alec Rollins as he picks up four yards on the carry. Burlington, right? But for me, Burlington has to capitalize on those, on those opportunities. Those, those, they don't come, they don't come too often. They have to take advantage. And so far, they've, they've kind of lacked in that. They've, uh, they, you know, they, they have to start pulling together and trying to over, uh, cur uh, try to take advantage of the other team's mistakes. As, as both teams are letting the clock tick down and the, as it is coming to the end of the third quarter, as we have a... At the end of the third quarter with the score up, Wakefield 22, Burlington 6. As the third quarter Once comes to an end, a bit of a delay between the uh, officials' clock and, and the game and clock, the game but game nonetheless, the third quarter I comes to an end. 
as there is a bit of confusion. As it does come to an end, yes indeed, as the Burlington Red Devils are down 22-6. Both teams having a score, but Burlington missing their two-point conversion. We'll see you at the start of the fourth quarter. And we're back as it's the start of the fourth quarter. As no time is there as the handoff is given to Wakefield, and he's, as I believe that's number 26 there on the carry. Fitzpatrick, who else, as he has been dominant in this second half, as he slips over his own shoelaces, maybe. And that will be just short of the Wakefield first down. If you're just tuning into the game, sorry, Matt, it is currently 22 to 6, where the Burlington Red Devils are taking the lead, <laughs> not taking the lead, down 22 to 6, excuse me to the Wakefield Warriors as that would be ideal if we had the lead. But hopefully Burlington's defense can get a big stop right here and maybe turn that into offense as they really need to limit their turnovers. As the defense was in a 4-3 formation as number eight, okay, Joe Marinaccio is brought down a warrior. for a first, first down, down of the Warriors on a one yard carry. Burns has to step up their defense right here and try to score some as points. The, as the clock is ticking down, Matt, you really got to get closer and closer to thinking we've got to start taking riskier plays, take shots downfield so we can try to win this game because when you're down 16 and you're on the defensive end, Wakefield, they have nothing to worry about. All they have to do is waste time, drain the clock, and play good defense. If they get a score right here, that could silence it, but Burlington's defense needs to be strong and stout as it was not right there as Marnaccio picks up six yards on the carry, taking it more and more into the Bur towards the Burlington end zone. As Burlington really needs a big stop right here. Yeah. Burlington has to, I mean, with this much time left, they probably would have to make some risky moves here. You know, they have to try to get the end zone, try to get back in this game. Oh, here comes a blitz. Nope, zone. As the handoff is given to Marnaccio as he picks up one yard on the carry. As it will be a third and four. Or Wakefield. As Burlington's defense has to defend one more time, most likely, if they can get a stop. And hopefully force this Wakefield team to punt, which would, which would be huge for the Red Devils, as they are certainly letting the clock tick down, as there's already eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. That's what the Warriors, that's what the Warriors want. That's, their, that's what they're aiming is to run the clock and try to... As the handoff is given to Shea, he easily okay, gets the first down as that is not what Burlington wanted, Matt. They needed to stop when they needed it soon. Just picture it as four more downs for Wakefield to waste the clock as the clock continues to tick down and time is Burlington's worst enemy at this point. It is. They, they need all the time they... In the world, they need they need to get, to stop the Warriors' momentum here and try to get back in this game. As a near fumble is turned into a pickup of three yards for the quarterback Lucy there. So Lucy, my pronunciation is everywhere tonight. As Lucy picks up one or two yards there on the carries. It will be second and eight on the Burlington 36 yard line. Matt, what does Burlington need to do to prevent a touchdown for Wakefield? Well, what Burlington needs to do here, they, they can't allow the Warriors to gain, gain any more downs. They have to try to stop them, regain the ball, and try to As we score have some a, points. A penalty flag as it's a delay a game, and that's at least one thing that will stop the clock. 
as Wakefield wasted too much trying to run down the game clock, gets hit with a five yard penalty as it will be second and I believe 13 for Wakefield as now they have to take this drive seriously. As Wakefield lined up in the Wildcat formation. Lucy getting the ball, hands it off to Forty who is brought down by Billy Pappas with the great tackle. PJ Iannuzzi on the carry. It was PJ Iannuzzi on the carry. Ball still scored at the 42 yard line. And with little time left, Burlington needs to start get, regaining the ball and try to Third in 14. gain some yardage and get back in this game. Clock's ticking. As the time is ticking down, this time is Burlington's worst enemy as it is just under six minutes remaining, meaning that this Wakefield team has late, wasted nearly five minutes in the drive so far. As the snap is given, Lucy looking towards the end zone for McKenna as the pass is just overthrown. McKenna looking for his third He's touchdown of the night. Fourth yeah. And it will be fourth and 14. 14 so Wakefield finally their possession will be will end and will be forced to punt. Fortunate enough for Burlington that they didn't catch that ball and s score right there because if they did, this game probably would have come to an end because this is they have to stop them where they are right now. The war the Burlington has to stop the Warriors and try to get back in this game. They are losing time as the players roll onto the field now. Neary is set to do the punt. A short snap. The punt is short as well as it's rolling. And it goes out of bounds at the 18 yard line. So a fantastic punt by Wakefield. Puts Burlington in tough field position. Matt, this is when the game really comes down to it. There is pressure on you. No time. You got to perform big. And this drive could mean it all. I believe this drive will mean it will mean it all because Burlington has this this, this it's, Burlington has to come up with a way to get to the end zone and try to As Sear taking it out of bounds, looks like he will get the first down, but we have a penalty That's flag. Dan Marinaccio oh. there with the carry. Oh. Excuse me, with the tackle. As Zachary Sear, no one can replace him with the carry, picking up the first down if the penalty marker is not against Burlington. As it looks to be, yes indeed, a penalty on the Burlington Red Devils. I believe it was an illegal, I believe it was a illegal formation on Burlington, as they will have it first and 15 on the 18 yard line, 13 yard line. Bonfilio looking for Lamine. Lamine catches it and is nailed. He was clocked by number eight, Mernaccio again. Has a nice 12 yard reception there for Lamine. Takes it to a second and, second and three for this Wakefield team. And Burlington has made some good plays. They've been catching the ball good, and they just haven't been able to run the ball far. As the pass is intended downfield for Lamine out of bounds, but we have a double flags thrown, as it looks like it would be against Wakefield here. As we'll wait for the referees to see their call. Offside Wakefield. Wakefield, which makes a huge difference for Burlington, which were as they were in a second and three to not only stop the clock, but give but give them an elusive first down. As Matt, time is their worst enemy, as said multiple times before. There's about four minutes left, and speaking of worst enemy, the ball was nearly fumbled by Bonfilio as he has to rush to throw it. Out of bounds, a near it's tricky complete. play, but Matt, 423 remaining in the fourth quarter. You're down 22 to 6. You got to do something with this clock. What are you going to do? 
Well, you have to try to gain some momentum and try to score some points here while, while, while there is time. Because last thing I want to do is try to go for, you know, onside kicks and all those risky plays. As Bonfilio that looks for Zachary Sears, he drops it. A perfect pass, maybe a little high, but dropped yeah, by Zachary Sear. He's not known for missing third those catches, catch. as it will be a third and ten for Burlington. But I would say I would say that the second half ha they have improved, but yet they their offense still they they need to score more points here. They, they've Burlington in the last three games, including this one, has had a dominant second half performance as it has been subpar so far here. As it looks like we have a penalty so flag as it could be against the Burlington Red Devils. Yes, it is a false start on the Red Devils, so it's going to be a third and 15. As penalties, Matt, the flags are flying in both directions today. How much has that contributed to what the score is right now? I think that contributed a lot to the score, but I think most of it has to do with, you know, Warriors have made good plays and Red Devils, you know. I think Burlington uh, was hit with many stupid penalties today as they got many going their way as well, including that false start as Bonfilio looking for Sear and it is caught by Zachary Sear. And he is finally brought down at the 49 yard line as he gets the first down with just under four minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. As the Devils pick up a first down as they rush to the 50-yard line to try to get their next play off as the clock continues to tick down. And with little time left, you have to assume that Burlington may want to go for risky moves. Bonfilio pressured as he lobs a pass intended for Kyle Forrester, and it just falls short, so Burlington will get it with a second and 10 on the 49-yard line in the attacking zone. I think for Burlington right here, they, you know, they uh, they have to try to gain gain some momentum back and uh, create some plays and try to get far because time is ticking. As Burlington is getting set here, Bonfilio pressured again as the offensive line has been squeaky, taking it, rushing it, and gets out of bounds at about the, I believe, the 44-yard line. As he gets six First yards down. there on his own carry on the keeper play. Matt seems like in the second half, the offensive line has been a bit iffy. It has. I think the offensive line for Burlington has been a little iffy. Uh, they managed to score once, but they need to put in a few more to try to get back in this. And was pressured yet again. The pass is intended. And... I believe it was picked by off by Wakefield. So Bonfilio pressured, has to throw it on a desperation heave. And Wakefield gets the third interception of the night. Matt, that's Burlington's fourth turnover of the game. As you said it before the game, they need to limit turnovers. And this might be the reason why they're in this position. I believe this is the reason why. I think uh, they've been doing. This is the four, fourth interception this, this evening, and they just been. They just. This is the number one, the third. third uh, excuse me, third interception. Uh, and you know, that 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 changes the momentum. It just really. It's a. Uh, con a confidence. It, it lack confidence, and it just, you know. As. We are being currently overshadowed by a loud and abdomen <laughs> Wakefield fans. Is it's all right, Matt. <laughs> the handoff is given to Shea as he picks up one or two yards on the carry. Tackle by Billy Pappas. As Burlington takes a timeout, and in this situation, though the score is how it is, 
Wakefield will, will try to run down the clock and is up to Brunson and take time down, excuse me, take timeouts and slow it down. And the, the uh, advantage for Brunson right now is for the clock to not be moving because every time, no, that gives Brunson time to regroup and think over their strategy and try to come up with a good play to get back in this game. They, at this point, they probably are going to do whatever they can to uh, score big points and get far and try to, you know. As the handoff is given to Shea yet again, and Shea is brought down for no gain on the play as it will force third and nine for Wakefield. As Burlington takes another timeout. Trying to stop it, the clock. That's the only hope right now is for the clock to not be moving. Again, to give them time to talk, talk it over. Think of a, think a few plays that they could, you know, uh, think of a few plays. Now, interesting decision here by Burlington to take the timeouts now, considering there is three minutes remaining. They could have let the clock run and take that chance if they trust their defense enough, which has been decent today and maybe get it back on the offensive end and use your timeouts wisely then. But they do have roughly two remaining here. As there is pressure, a fake pass is given. So I believe that was number 50, Brendan Marshall. Shout out in the third. And that would be, a, I believe, a fourth down? Yes, a fourth and 11. As geez, Wakefield will be forced to punt. Man, this roster has many Jets players on it. Or names at least with it. Brandon Marshall, a wide receiver. Ryan's, Ryan Fitzpatrick, an old quarterback. It seems like some of these seems like some of these players in Wakefield sure like to copy other names. As Burlington trying to get, as they just had a fantastic defensive stop, will have another chance on the offensive end. As Wakefield runs on the field to get steady to punt, ready to punt. As it is 3.07, as they finally reset the clock, as the fan section is getting in the game yet again to try to ensure this team a win. Fans are getting loud. As the kick is up, a very short punt to Zachary Sear, who takes it. Sear running with a convoy ahead of him, and he is brought down at roughly the 13-yard line and tackled by the Warriors. So Burlington Matt gets great field position already they do they are uh, they have the uh, field possession now they have to try to take a try to take it long and they have they, they have to score points here they they're they're in a desperate desperate situation get some points here they gotta get back in this game they gotta get back on the winning the winning streak winning column and they uh you know if they have any hopes of making it far you know this game is very important for them. And, uh, and you don't want to be a downer at this point, but Burlington needs to really limit these turnovers as they do have fantastic field position. But we've seen it time in and time out again, well, Matt. Burlington is close to the end zone and throws an interception or fumbles it. So they really need to limit it to get back in this game when there's only about three minutes. So a very small amount of time to you know make it a close game again. Burlington would certainly need a miracle to get back in it as they are down by 16 points. So I'm interested to see what will unfold on this play. And I believe Burlington can do it. They they have the team to do it. Let's just see if they can pull it off. I mean, they have the time. Let's see if they can use that time to, to their advantage. As the referees are speaking over a play or so. Bonfilio and his team 
lined up in the pro set formation. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. With Kyle Forrester with him. Excuse me, in the trips formation, three receivers to the right. Bonfilio scrambling and has to throw it out of bounds, nearly caught by Zachary Sears. That stops the clock. The offensive line, Matt, has been very, very shaky here in this second half. You think that's played a big part in the score? I think it has. Um, th I, I think a lot of it has been lacking. The defense, obviously, the game about 22 points. You know, you, you have to think the defense has to, and, and it's not just the defense, it's the number of interceptions, the turnovers, and that's, I think to me, the, the turnovers is what's killing them in this game. As Burlington has it right now, snap high to Bonfilio, who's in the shotgun. Bonfilio scrambling, has to take it himself and is brought down yet again as the pass prediction was just not good enough on that play as Bonfilio picks up three yards on the quarterback scramble. As the, as the clock is continuing to run, as there's less than two minutes, two and a half minutes left to go, as the two-minute warning is approaching. Burlington might get set for another run in the trip formation. They give to Zachary Sear with the catch. And he is brought down trying to pick up more and more yards. And he will be just short That's of the first down. To the four yard line and a first down, Burlington. Not just short, he is there for the first down for Burlington, making it first in goal. Hopefully Burlington can punch it into the end zone as it is currently two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter as Bonfilio takes it himself and he is into the end zone for a Red Devil touchdown. It may be late, but it's a score as the Red Devils have something to hope for as they are currently down 22 to 12 by a late scramble touchdown by Bonfilio. That was a great touchdown by Burlington. Now I have to think here, will they go for the all risky onside kick? Will they attempt that? It is, it, it, it can prove. I feel like in this point, you really have no other option. As Burlington will go for the two point conversion yet again. Motion with Zachary Sear as Bonfilio takes it himself and is tripped up short, beautifully read by the Warriors as Burlington fails on a two point inversion for the second time tonight. As Burlington will have no choice in this situation to do an onside kick. As Burlington is down 22 to 12 with less than two minutes remaining as the band for Burlington is currently playing the fight song stolen from Notre Dame trying to get them back in this game. As the Red Devils almost 100% likely will be set to do an onside kick as Dylan Bonfilio, the quarterback, is getting set to, to do the onside kick. A bit of a surprise. Matt, this is sort of odd when you have your QB, not even your kicker doing it. Yeah, I, I know. Taking a big risk here. As Lamine is not to be seen on the field as well. <laughs> Bonfilio with it. A great little chip as it is given straight to number five on Wakefield. And the Warriors get that as they retain possession with less than two minutes remaining. So. Matt, the onside kick did not go in Burlington's favor. A good try, a valiant effort, but Wakefield retains possession yet again. That was a very good try by Burlington. They, they tried their best and they went for it, came up a little short, and well, let's just hope that they can, hope that the Warriors turn over or they get an in, the interception or something happens and they get the ball back. And But with little time left, it's gonna be hard. As there is very little time, Burlington needs a stop right here. 
as Wakefield is probably getting set to run out the clock. Wakefield set up in the I formation. Burlington rushing five right here. As they read the play perfectly as 45 is brought uh, down by time Burlington. Out field, time out Burlington. And Burlington takes another timeout, which they now have only one remaining. And the Warriors and the Warriors job right here is just to run the clock. Try to stop Burlington from scoring and take the, take this game. I agree with you, Matt. The Warriors really have nothing to worry about here, and all they need to do is just take advantage of the time that they have, and Burlington only has one timeout. So if the Warriors get a first down, that could basically mean the game as they are set to run it again as number eight picks up more and more yards. Marinaccio on the carry to the 45-yard line as he picks up five yards on the carry. It's going to be a third and five final timeout for the Devils. This is their final timeout. And let's just hope they uh, can do what they can to, get to score some runs fast because the clock is limited. And Burlington needs to act fast now as it is third and five with a minute 42 remaining. As this clock is definitely their enemy as that was their final timeout. So after this play, the clock will continue to run out even more as Burlington getting set up, anticipating a run. The handoff is given and he... Marciano picks up the first down. Burlington is unfortunate and could not get the stop as Alec Rollins looks like he's limping a bit. Unfortunate there. And the clock will, I believe we have a, no, the clock will continue to tick down with about 1.30 remaining. As now it's in Wakefield's hands. Matt, this game is most likely over. A valiant effort for this Burlington Red Devils team, but unfortunately, they fall to a superior team. Yep. Burlington did get, um. Burlington had a good chance here, and they came in here thinking that they were gonna win this game, and that's not what you wanna do before a game. Fortunate for Wakefield as they clinch their division right here, going on the four game winning streak. A fantastic end of the season for Wakefield as Burlington will have another game to prove themselves as they may not be in playoff form, but will get a chance next week at Varsity Field at seven o'clock where the Red Devils will play. Here in this game, it was a fantastic game as the Red Devils were down, I believe, 15-0 at halftime and responded with two touchdowns while Wakefield only had one as the clock ticks down to zero and that's the game folks we thank you for watching and we'll see you next time when the Burlington Red Devils play on Friday we'll see you then I'm Joe Vicioni alongside I'm Matt DiMarzio and we'll see you next time we'll see you thanks next for time. watching see ya